Hey everyone, welcome back to our Harkla YouTube channel. We're so happy to have you back. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica. We're the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla, and today we're gonna talk about the TLR and the Landau Reflex. If you are completely confused as to what those things meant, if you've never heard of primitive reflexes, you're not sure where to start, click back and go through some of our previous content. We will link podcasts, YouTube videos, blog posts in the description below, so that way you can catch up and we're gonna dive specifically into the TLR, the tonic labyrinthine, as well as the Landau reflex in this video specifically today. So first, the TLR, the tonic labyrinthine reflex, is a primitive reflex that divides the body into a front half and a back half. So there is a flexion or forward movement pattern with this reflex, as well as an extension or backward pattern with this reflex. And this reflex specifically helps with infant's newfound challenge of gravity after birth. It also is directly connected to the vestibular system or the sensory system that's located in your ear, which is also connected to muscle tone, balance and coordination. It's really all connected here. Now the Landau reflex is actually considered a secondary reflex because it's not present at birth like the TLR is. In fact, it actually appears after the TLR is integrating around four months of age, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But the Landau reflex is also known as that swimmer reflex. So when baby is laying in tummy time and their arms come up off the ground and their legs are kind of swimming, that's that Landau reflex. What does this reflex look like specifically in infancy? Well, the TLR, the tonic labyrinthine, it has those two different components, right? So the forward or the flexion is activated when the baby looks down or their head comes into flexion and their body flexes into that same position. And then on the flip side for the extension pattern, when the baby looks up or their neck moves into an extension pattern, their body follows and it moves into extension as well. Now the Landau, like I already mentioned previously, is kind of that swimmer reflex. So when baby is on their tummy, instead of letting their arms and their legs and their head drop to the floor, their body tenses up throughout the upper body and the core, brings their head up to look for a visual reference, and really activates all of the muscles throughout the upper body and the core. This is why it's so important for babies to do adequate tummy time and floor time so that way they can work through these reflexes. When we skip that, oftentimes that leads to these reflexes not being integrated or they're not going away on that specific timeline. Speaking of that timeline, when do these reflexes integrate? The TLR is developed in utero, should be fully developed by birth, and can integrate anywhere between three months old and three years old while the Landau should be fully integrated by three years old as well. What's interesting about the Landau, kind of what Jessica mentioned earlier, is it is more of that postural reflex or that secondary reflex, so it's not developed at birth when the baby is born. As the TLR is working towards integration, that extension is working towards integration, the flexion is working towards integration, then that Landau kicks in and the baby can come in up into Superman position and really work on defying gravity. And so by you know about four months is when we're starting to see that, that Superman position. And then as late as three years, it can integrate completely. Now, if the TLR and the Landau don't integrate there are some signs and symptoms that can show up in older children. And the first one that we might see is low muscle tone. Both of these reflexes do have an effect on the child's muscle tone and their ability to have that good muscle tone and posture. And so if they get stuck in the body, the child is gonna have lower muscle tone and they're gonna have poor endurance throughout all of their daily activities. And just piggybacking on that, that poor posture that we see, it's almost like an ape-like posture, like they just don't have the strength to maintain a good upright position. And you've seen them sit at the table in class and they're constantly slouching and they just really are struggling to maintain that upright position um, easily without fatiguing. Another sign is gonna be visual vestibular challenges. So anytime our head moves, our vestibular system is activated and it's led by our vision. So when you turn your head to look at something or when you look up at the sky, because the TLR is directed by vision and head position changes, there's that connection to mm -hmm. visual vestibular processing. So if these reflexes are, in, are retained and stuck in the body, the child is gonna struggle with 
coordinating their movement with their vision for different things like sports and playing catch mm -hmm. and even just walking through their environment. Yep. Another big thing to talk about with these reflexes is oftentimes kids will get diagnosed with dyslexia, dyscalculia, dysgraphia, when in reality, it's these primitive reflexes that are staying inside the body. They're not maturing or going away as they should. So they're looking like dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia, when really it's the retained primitive reflex. So it's definitely something that we wanna rule out when a child does have that diagnosis or is looking like they might have dyslexia. Another one is gonna be poor coordination. So the child might avoid sporting activities because they can't coordinate their body to play football or basketball. They might struggle at the playground to coordinate their body to safely move throughout the playground equipment. So they might even avoid the playground. So now that you kind of have a general outline of what the TLR and the Landau reflexes look like, let's give you one functional activity well, we're actually gonna give you two functional activities that you can incorporate into your daily routine, into your treatment sessions if you're a therapist, just to help integrate these reflexes. They're not going to, we're not saying they're going to completely integrate your reflexes, just a quick disclaimer, but they will be beneficial to add into your routine. So the first one is what we call a prone wall ball bounce or a prone bounce and catch. So we're gonna lay on our tummy and we're going to grab a playground ball or a racket ball and we're gonna use both hands and we're gonna throw the ball at the wall and try to catch it. Simultaneously, we're gonna be holding our body in that Superman position. So our arms are gonna be up off the ground, our chest is gonna be up off the ground, as well as our legs while we're throwing that ball at the wall and catching it. If you need to modify it, you can roll it back and forth with a partner while maintaining that prone extension. Again, if you wanna target the Landau reflex a little bit more on this one, keep the legs on the ground while you're just keeping your arms and your chest off the ground. So our legs are gonna be stuck on the ground and our upper body is gonna be up off the ground to work on that Landau reflex. So if your child is maybe around six years old and they're really struggling to hold that prone extension position, that Superman position for you know 20 plus seconds, that could be a red flag as to looking at the TLR, the Landau, or really any reflexes because we know that these reflexes kind of travel in packs. So it's just something to be aware of. If your child is really struggling with this one, keep an eye on it. The second activity we're gonna give you today is called a rainbow pass. So you're gonna have your child lay on the floor on their back. They're gonna lift their head off the ground and their arms and their legs off the ground and they're gonna hold a large therapy ball. If you don't have a large therapy ball, you can use a playground ball and they're gonna hold it in their hands and transfer the ball from their hands to their feet and then try to slowly bring their feet down to touch the ball to the ground, then back up to transfer the ball from their feet to their hands, bring their hands down behind their head to try to touch the ground. That's a rainbow pass. Again, you wanna have your child keep their head off the ground if possible. This is a really great strengthening exercise, but it also specifically targets the TLR flexion position or that forward position. If your child is unable to easily keep their head off the floor for a couple of rounds of rainbow pass, if they're unable to coordinate their arms and their legs together to do the pass, if they're rocking side to side during the rainbow pass because they don't have the core stability to stay upright, then these are signs that the TLR might be retained and it's worth looking into getting their primitive reflexes tested. Okay, that was a lot, but obviously we're really passionate about this topic and we want to let you know if you're curious about learning, testing and integration, functional activities, if you're like, okay, this sounds like my child, I need to learn more. We do have a full course available. It's just been completely rebranded and it is absolutely, I mean, we're a little bit, um, what's the word? Biased. Biased, but it is really great. This course is super cool because there's actually three different purchase options. The expert purchase option is designed for parents just learning about primitive reflexes who want to help their child integrate some retained primitive reflexes. The second option is the master purchase option, and this is more geared towards professionals, educators, therapists who are working with children who want the full gamut of everything you can possibly have to help with primitive reflex integration. And then the third option is our AOTA CEU certified version where if you're an occupational therapist or an occupational therapy assistant like us, you actually earn continuing education credits for taking this course. 
The other thing that was really exciting, I'm just so excited. Okay. I know. <laughs> the other thing that is so exciting about the AOTA CEU version is you actually get this workbook included in your purchase. So this workbook includes all of the PDFs and resources that you get in all the courses, but it's just printed in this handy dandy workbook you know, easily accessible if you're in the clinic, you can quick flip to a page if you aren't sure how to test for a specific reflex or if you need some activity ideas. There are tons of options in here and it just makes the course like more applicable and it's just so much easier to implement when you have everything in front of you. But again, the PDFs are included in all of the options. The AOTA version just includes this workbook. You can purchase the workbook separately if you don't need the AOTA CEUs, but you still want the workbook, that's an option as well. Like Rachel said, there's a ton of PDFs that come with all three purchase options. All three options also include lots of video demonstrations so that all the activities and exercises we teach you, there's a video to follow it up so it shows you exactly what it should look like and what it shouldn't look like. So we kind of go back and forth and show you all of the different things. And another great thing is there's a discussion forum within the course. So if you have questions or comments as you're going through the course, you can pop in there, put your question in there. Rachel and I will actually go in there a couple of times a week and respond to any questions, have these amazing discussions and brainstorming sessions within the course. The course also includes checklists for kids, for parents, for adults to really help identify if those reflexes are retained or not before you move into that formal testing, which we teach you. We also have case studies as well in this course, so that way you can see us testing kiddos, you can see what these reflexes look like when they are retained or when they're integrated based on real kiddos, which was um, some input that we'd received from our previous course. We, go, we went ahead and added that in to this version and it just makes the application so much easier. Yeah. So like Rachel already said, we're super excited for this course. You can find the link to the course in the description below. So that is it for you today. We hope that it was helpful. We had a great time chatting with you about these reflexes. You know we're completely obsessed about this topic. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram if you don't already. You can find us at harkla underscore family as well as at all things sensory podcast. Going along with that, we do have a podcast with tons of episodes. We talk a lot about reflexes there as well. Obviously, it's about sensory, so we talk about that too. You can find it on all major podcast platforms. It's called All Things Sensory. Make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel so you never miss another video. Leave a comment if you enjoyed this video today. Share it with a friend who might also find it helpful, and we will talk to you next week. Okay, bye. What's the joke that I have to have the, the, oh, the I have last, the last word? Day. That's the last what word. it is. That's what it is. Oh, I'm the worst. Signs. Thanks for putting up with me, guys. <laughs>